Hey everybody, I hope you had a great weekend. So it's Monday, so let's get going on our new project. So uh, let's start with finding an image to work with. Today we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of work with our marquees, especially, and then starting to work on some photo uh, touch-up techniques. So let's start with that uh, with the marquee exercises. And we're going to do what we call a shadow box. So if you don't know what a shadow box is, a shadow box in real life is sort of like a sort of like a picture frame that holds objects with depth. So uh, you find them a lot for um, like World War II, World War II, any any war really, medals or soldiers' medals or little keepsakes from uh, from loved ones. So go into Google. I just searched shadow box. See. And especially you get a lot of, of war related or soldier related stuff. But I want you to find one. Yeah, there's a good example of something that's not metal related. But anyway, I want you to find something with several compartments. I saw something down here that I liked. Yeah, this one here. I'm going to go with that. I am going to uh, copy the image by right clicking on the image and pressing copy image. Making copy image. Photoshop is already open. So let's say create new. And then uh, there should be, a, if you have something on your clipboard, if you've copied something, uh, you should have the option clipboard, the size of the clipboard. This one uh, is about 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. So that's fine. That's a little smaller than I was hoping to work with, but that's fine. It'll open a file that's exactly the size of the image on your clipboard. Then hold Command V or Control V to paste the image on, and it's a perfect fit. Kind of a nifty little trick. So now we're going to work on replacing a lot of these images in these little compartments on this shadow box with other images that we're going to find just here and there and everywhere around the web. So the first thing we need to learn about is the marquee tool. So if you look up here, going to see this rectangular marquee tool that should be the default and you click if you click it and you drag it really just anywhere you're going to see that it creates all this little path with ants along it so it doesn't really do anything you can just kind of think of the marquee tool as sort of a hypothetical little like area and it'll allow you to work in that area but it doesn't really do anything itself so we can do a number of different things. Like, let me move to a different layer so we don't mess up our image. So the marquee tool is still there. Even if you navigate between layers, it'll still be there. See layer one, layer two, it's still there. It doesn't disappear. Although if you did click somewhere else, it will disappear. So if you wanna uh, make it disappear without clicking somewhere else, you can just hold Command D or hold Command press D or Control D, which means D. It'll get rid of it. So now whenever you create a marquee, it allows you to work in that space. So let's select a paintbrush and let me just start drawing. So I'm just drawing back and forth real sloppy. And see how it doesn't let me draw outside the marquee? It's because it, it, it says, okay, here's the working space. And nothing you do outside of that area, it, it's not going to pay attention to any of that stuff. Okay, so that's a, that's a nifty little trick. Also, by the way, another really useful tool is you, let me make another marquee. As you can go up to select, and say inverse. So if you collect select and then choose inverse, it'll actually select everything outside of what you've selected with a marquee tool. So let's use the paintbrush and see what happened. Right? So it did the exact opposite. Everything else but the area inside the marquee is selected. So let's look at what other marquees we have. So we have the rectangular marquee, we have the elliptical marquee, which does the exact, it works the exact same way as your ellipsis tool. Remember the shape tool that we went over last week? And of course, you know how it works. It works the same way. We right click on it again. Oh, si you know, single row and single column marquee tools. I honestly, I do not use very often and I don't, I can't think of really very many instances you need it, but it's actually, it just creates a marquee that's one pixel wide. So if you take a brush and kind of, I don't know, I'll kind of go in and out and then deselect it. You can barely see it. I'll zoom in. You can see it there. It's, just, it's one pixel wide. So it'll create a very tiny little marquee for you to draw in. And you can see it kind of, you know, I drew here, but not here. And I drew over here. 
You also have the single column marquee tool. So it just it does the same thing as the horizontal marquee, but vertically. So I'll just kind of scribble in and out of it again and deselect. And you can see I've sort of created a little thin blue line there. So marquee tools. So now here's the exercise I want you to do is let's go online and let's find some textures. So I'm going to go on, I'm going to try to find a wood texture. You can choose whatever texture you want. Let's see, wood texture. Yeah, okay, that looks, that looks good. I'm going to right click, I'm going to say copy image. I'm going to go back to Photoshop over here and hit paste. Now, here's a new tool for you to learn. It's called the move tool. And the move tool is used to, yeah, as you might imagine, move things around. And it's really especially useful if you have something that's sort of like one chunk on a separate layer. So if I go over to this layer here and I try to, well, let's make this invisible, the wood. And I try to move things around, it's going to move everything on that layer. We don't want that. We want this wood to move around. So we're going to cover the sweet baby, you know, whatchamadoodle uh, with this wood tool. But there is a problem is it's a little bit too big, right? So let's make it invisible. Let's go to the first layer. Let's select with the marquee and let's get in and try to be real precise and try to get just the edges of this little compartment. And so now we're going to select everything outside the marquee by going back to select inverse, just like we did before. Now everything outside the marquee is selected. And now just hit delete. Put a little chunk of wood to fit right in there perfectly. So I want you to repeat this, uh, these steps and fill in every little box here with something else, non baby related. So just other textures. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward the video. All right, so now you can see that we've replaced all the text, all the uh, little baby compartments with uh, various textures. But you'll notice that some of these don't line up quite right, right? Like here it's off. Yeah, a little bit off there too. Um, I think this one came off a little bit. Yeah, you can see how it kind of goes a little too far to the right. So let's talk about another tool we have. This is called the, uh, <clears throat> actually it's not a tool, so I take that back. Just another little trick called the uh, transform option. So here, this is a trick actually though. Go over to your image for the sand. Hold, mm, I think it's command. Yep, okay, it's a command on a Mac or control on a PC and click the image. And it's gonna select what's in the image and only what's in the image on that layer. So if you, if, by the way, if you tried to, let me deselect. If you tried to click over here in the gray area and hold control and click, it won't work. For whatever reason, you got to click on the image and it'll give you that. So now let's go up to image. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry, edit. And then, oh, you know what? No layer is selected. Let me select that layer. So seven, layer seven. We should be naming these. Let me go over here and name it sand. Uh, name them by just kind of slowly double clicking you got to give it like a, a slow double click like click click on layer four. Click, click. maybe it's quick okay moss let me try the next one click and then i'll go click click on the name yep there it is water yeah let's do wood um shadow box Oh, let's collect, select the sand layer. We have the image or the, you know, the um, little sand texture selected with a marquee. And we will say edit, transform. 
And so transform gives us a variety of different options. For example, we can scale. And it gives us these handlebars. We pulled the handlebars. And there we go. We scaled it. Good in any direction. Go to edit, transform, uh, rotate. You can probably imagine what this does, but you'll notice that your cursor turns into these little curvy arrows. So if you just grab it and hold it and drag around, you'll start to rotate the image. Transform. Let's go to skew and see what happens with that. So you notice that when you you notice when we hover over uh, the little anchors on the sides, we get little back and forth arrows. But when we hover over the corners, we get nothing. That's because only the side ones work with skew. And that's what it does. Kind of useful, especially if you're trying to give something a perspective look. Okay, let's check out distort. So what do you think distort will do? So you'll notice, There we go. So you can grab the sides and you can kind of give it a, a skew while, while trans, transforming its size at the same time. Same thing with the side, the side here. So you can kind of give things a 3D look pretty easily that way. Ah, perspective actually does pretty much what we've been doing already. <laughs> Last but not least, warp is kind of interesting. You're going to just move one anchor point, and it really kind of gives it this weird distorted effect that you can kind of manipulate quite extensively. That's a lot of fun, so feel free to experiment around with this. One, two, three, four. Now, here's the one that, oh, you know what? I've got to finish this. Um, you know, we could go through each and every one of these, like rotate 180 degrees, which, you know, kind of makes sense uh, flip horizontally, which you know you can kind of figure out what that means just by the name. But right, let's not go through each one. I'm just going to skip straight to free transform, which is frankly the one that I use the most often because you can kind of do most of those at the same time. Is uh, you know you can size it, you can change it. Oops. And if you uh, it depends on how your your shortcuts are set up, um, because mine actually seems to be a little different than most people's, and I did not manipulate mine. At any point, so I think maybe the ver the different Photoshop versions have different shortcut settings, but mine keeps things the same size whenever I start warping it. But yours might not. So it keeps everything proportionate. And now, if you if you do this and you hold Control, then you're able to turn it into sort of like more like a, a perspective skew. Now, let go of Control, and it goes back to you hold Alt. Then it goes. It starts. Starts you from the center instead of from the corner or from the that's funny a minute ago is yeah yeah that's right from the side and then shift will allow you to just do left and right so try free transform and then all your different uh, control shift and alt and see what you know see the different things that it does. Another one to try out while we're discussing transforming tools is a puppet warp. So let's click puppet warp and you'll notice that this big old grid covers your image. And now let's just start clicking on different points. Let's say uh, right here, right here, right here, and right here. Now those are, uh, we, we've created little tacks on the image and then we can move those around or a little, I guess you could say anchors. We can move those around and Photoshop tries to manipulate the image based on those anchors. So that one can be a lot of fun. Now to undo these changes, we can just click on a different tool and it'll say, apply the puppet warp. And we can just say, don't apply. So it'll go back to normal. So to adjust mine, I think I need to rotate it just a pinch. Here we go. All right, and then change its scale. 
Actually, I'm just going to go to free transform. And that looks better. Bring that in. There we go. That looks better, right? So that's how you use the transform. I keep wanting to say transform tools. But they're not. You can hit enter to um, exit the mode. You can also hit escape. And then I'm going to hit command B to deselect, and we're all set. All right, here's our next task, is we are going to crop, or not really crop, but we're going to remove images from other images and paste them into what we're creating here. So go to Google. I'm going to go find a shell. Oops, I'm going to go find a shell on Google. Shell. Okay, images, not shell stations. Hmm, there's a good one. Ooh, that might be a little complicated. Try to find one with, I'm going to try to find one with a background. Oh, that's pretty. Aha, okay, this is a good one. So I'm going to say copy image. Go back to my Photoshop image. Create a new layer, paste it in. Great. All right, now let's use the pen tool to create a path around our shell. So you can select the pen tool or press the P button for a shortcut. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this part. And there we go. Now you have a little path that uh, circles the, the shell. Now we're going to use this path to create a selection or a marquee, like a, a marquee and cut it out of this image and paste it into our um, shadow box. So let's go to path here. And you know what? I'm going to duplicate. Let's see. Is it going to let me duplicate it? Yeah. Um, I just duplicated it by holding. I kind of used a little shortcut. I used alt and I just sort of dragged it over. And that's just because I kind of want there to be two versions in case I screw one up. <laughs> so now we're going to we're going to take path number one, the one I just duplicated and right click it. And you're going to see there's a few selections. We can either duplicate path so we can delete it um, or we can make a selection. Actually, we can do a few other things also. So there's fill path and that'll fill it with a, a color, the foreground color there. We can also, uh, let's see, change it to the background color. So you remember over here, we have our foreground and background color. So you can choose the background color, hit OK, you'll fill it with white. Or we can fill it with a different color that we want, it, that we can specifically define. So this will pop up the color wheel, and we can choose a new color and hit OK, and I'll fill it with the color I just chose. See. Oh, and we can also adjust the transparency. So everybody knows what transparency is. So now it's filled with red, but it's only 75% opacity, so it's kind of transparent. This is great if you want to trace, uh, trace like a, say a horse. Say if you want to put, you know, little images, silhouettes of a horse in the background, like a wallpaper or something. Or you want you're designing a dress or a shirt. You want to put a picture of a yeah, like a horse or a bird or something like that. See a seashell on the front. This is great for that. Let's see, we can also stroke the path. So from last time, you probably remember what stroking the path is. It's you draw ink basically along the path line there. So we can either choose, we can choose what tool we want. I'm going to say the brush and we can hit okay. And there we go. It stroked the path. So we don't actually want any of those though. We want to make a selection. So right click and say, make selection. Uh, feather radius is really important, but we're not going to talk about that right now. But for now, we're going to say zero. Does anybody know what an, uh, aliasing is? Uh, if not, aliasing is uh, whenever you have a straight line up and down, you know, your pixels are basically little boxes. So uh, a straight up and down line is going to look perfect. Uh, left and right, you know, it's gonna, also going to look perfect, super smooth. 
But if you have a diagonal line, a computer isn't really meant, you know, the screen is not really meant to make a diagonal line because all the pixels are little boxes. So if anybody's ever played Mario Brothers on Nintendo, um, you know, you can see, you can tell that everything looks quite, you know, aliased. You know, the diagonal lines are very boxy. And so anti-aliasing is whenever they sort of uh, use the pixels around the ones that represent the line to kind of create the illusion that it's not like boxy like that. So like say you have a white background and you have a black uh, diagonal line. It's going to look like little boxes that are sort of, you know, um, like it's like stair steps, you know, a little up and then left or up, up to the side, up to the side. But then what alias uh, or anti-aliasing will do is it'll fill in the boxes that are sort of between the two with a little bit of gray. And so when you back up, it doesn't look as ragged and boxy. It, the gray kind of tricks your brain into thinking that there's sort of a line there. But it's sort of the background too because it's gray it's a little white mixed with black and so it create it actually just has a little trick on the mind that makes it look a lot smoother so that's what anti-aliasing does is it just makes things look smoother by tricking your brain and changing the colors to things so we're going to say let's see feather radius anti-aliasing yes okay and there we go there's our selection so i just pressed Control x or command uh, to cut the image out of that little selection and you'll notice, by the way, it's not perfect. You know, if you really want to spend time on it, you know, you get it perfectly, but it's going to look good. I'll, you know, you'll see, you'll be surprised. Now I'm going to make that invisible. I'm going to paste and there you go. You have a shell, right? Now we're going to transform. I'm just going to say free transform because you know, that's my favorite. You know, what? I'm going to turn it sideways too. So actually you can't use free transform to rotate. So I'm going to say transform, rotate and make it sideways. I'm going to move it over. Mm, it's still too big. So you know what to do. Go to your menu, free transform, shrink her down. Make sure it stays in the shadow box. Deselect. Oh, hit return. Good, right? Not bad. So here's your first assignment uh, for the weekly exercise is finish this assignment. Take all your items and cut them out and put them in the shadow box. And then uh, save it as a JPEG and send it to me. I'm gonna put this in fast forward and finish the assignment. And then we're gonna move on to the next exercise. All right, here we have it. This is the finished product. It should look a little bit like this, just all sorts of little cropped out pictures, not cropped, but um, pasted onto your textures over your shadow box frame. So go ahead and uh, save that as a JPEG and send it to me. Let's move on to the next project. So if you go online, and I know this is gonna be a little complicated, so I'll include this uh, in the assignment description on Canvas. It's just, it's a little hidden page on my web, on my personal profile website that I use to kind of dump images that we use for class, but it's petersarowski.github.io slash dart 100. I know this is dart 101, but some of the assignments overlap. So now scroll to the very bottom of the screen and you're going to see a selection of several images. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Five, six. So we have six images. Um, they're heavily damaged photographs. So I want you to choose one of them because we're going to restore one of these photographs to its original condition. And no, that's not me. People always ask me that. Is that you? No, it's not. It's some random image I found online. So I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to say copy image. Oh, sorry. That's right click, copy image. I'm going to open Photoshop and I'm going to say new. I'm going to choose the very first selection, which is clipboard. Oh, that's right. Hit create. And con control or command V for paste, and you have your image on your on your. Uh... Great. 
Now let's go through some of these photo retouching tools. So right here, you'll see a, to a tool that looks a little bit like a Band-Aid with sort of like a dotty circle behind it. So, and that's called the spot healing brush tool. And this is probably the quickest and simplest little fix photo fix tool available to you. So what it does is, uh, let's zoom in real close to this little hole in the image. I'm gonna cho choose a smaller, a little bit, a little bit bigger than, than the, the spot that I wanna heal or the spot that I wanna fix. And what it's, what the, what Adobe, what a Photoshop's gonna do is it's gonna sample around the edges of your brush tip and it's gonna say, okay, like this is kind of the color he wants. This is kind of like the pattern. So we're just going to take that and we're going to fill the circle with that general pattern. Oh, it's pretty, pretty quick and easy, right? So you have a little spot here. I'm going to make it a little bigger and that's it. Now you can actually, it doesn't have to be one quick little click. You can, you can drag it around. So if you have a longer thing you want to heal, you just do that and it gets rid of it. Very simple, right? But it has limitations. So for example, uh take this let's see what happens if we do this oh that was really good never mind i thought it wouldn't do so well let's try to find something okay here's here's a great example it's going right through her eye and now by the way funny thing is psychologically humans are very tuned into faces uh it's it's a it's a matter of um our our you know our species evolution is we've had to like read each other's faces for indications of what the person's going to do next and and so we were super tuned in. Whereas we look at a squirrel's face and we can't tell whether it's angry or whether it's going to run or it's going to jump at our face and attack us. We, you know, we're not tuned into their faces. So you have to be careful when you're retouching an image that has been, um, or, or that has some damage on the face because we are really sensitive to that. So let's see what happens if we just run the spot healer across the face, right? So we're going to notice that, right? That's not, that doesn't look right to us. Even though on the, on the shirt, we're not nearly as tuned into shirts. So we're, we're not going to go, oh, that's not the thread pattern. But here we will say there's something wrong. So spot healer, the spot healer is not going to do the job there. So let's right click and we'll see the healing brush tool. Now the healing brush tool is a little bit more complicated. But first we need to hold alt. And you'll notice that a little crosshair will appear. So I'm gonna click on, a, now I'm gonna to try to heal, or I'm gonna fix this little area here on her forehead. So I'm gonna click over here. I'm gonna say, okay, first I'm gonna make a smaller brush. I'm gonna say, okay, over here, this is what her, okay. I'm gonna say uh, her forehead should look kind of like this. So I'm gonna hold Alt and I'm gonna click. Okay, now it's sampled that area. Now I'm gonna go over to her forehead to the little crack in the photo. And do you notice that when I move over the photo, it sort of blanks out that crack? That's because it's sampling the forehead in the, in the good area and replacing the bad area with the good area. So let's draw a little line here. And you can see that when I hold the mouse button down and slide and drag, you can see a little crosshairs. What that's telling you is, oh, I'm sampling from over here and putting those pixels into your cursor. Now here on these border areas where it turns from light to dark, it's a little tricky. So I'm just gonna kinda, uh, that looks good. Sample over here. Ooh, actually that looks bad. That's actually already there though. There we go. Get a sample there to get this, uh, this background. Hmm. All right, and so you can see how it would work if you, you'd have to kind of get close in here, do some of this detail. That looks okay. That looks all right. tricky to find a good area to sample from without crowding into her eyeball. 
Oh, maybe that's pretty good. Okay, looks okay. All right, so that looked a lot better, right? So that's the advantage of that tool. Now, let's move on to the patch tool. The patch tool I find really useful for big areas. Let's see if I can remember how to use it right off the bat. So you circle the area that you want to change. So here we have a big old chip. And then you just click and drag until it looks good. Because you're going to sample from a new area. Hmm, some of that still doesn't look good. So I'm going to circle that in. I'm going to move it. And there we go. How about this area? This bad chip. I'm going to bring it out there. And there we go. How about this big old monster? Not bad, right? Very useful. And actually, it's, it's, it's quite useful for this detail work as well. So don't think it's just, it's just good for, you know, my monster, you know, chips out of an image. You can do it. Ah, that didn't look very good. It sort of feathers the edges. So you can see that with a little work, you'd, you'd get there with this one. So now the content aware move tool is, is really fairly similar, except it sort of works in the opposite way. Instead of circling the bad part and moving it to a good part, you're just going to circle the good part and move it to the bad part. Let's continue to use this tool to try to patch up this, this yucky area. and so on and so forth. There's one last tool over here called the red eye tool. Um, back in the old days, we had cameras that would, for, for those of you from a, from a slightly younger generation than me, we had, we had cameras that had a, a certain type of flash and would reflect off your eye and, and it would turn it red. So the camera, like all sorts of people had red eyes in photos from the 90s and 2000s. And this was a tool specifically designed to just get rid of the red eye. So you could just circle somebody's eye and it would just get rid of the red. But we don't really need that these days. Our flashes don't really have that effect anymore. So anyway, the, the second assignment for our weekly exercise is choose one of these photos and use the healing tools that you've used to try to touch it up, get it looking real as best you can and file that in into Canvas for me as a JPEG. So you have your... Um, your shadow box assignment and your photo retouching assignment. So I look forward to seeing your work. I'm going to go ahead and do this in fast forward. Right here we are. This is the finished product. So it's a it's a big difference from the picture that we started with. Let's take a look at her. All right, a lot of damage. Here we go. She's looking brand new. So anyway, uh, I look forward to seeing what you produce.